What's up, everybody? This is Battle Axe from the SOG crew, and we are live right here on the Cross TV. You are watching the SOG crew youth movement live from Doherty, California. And in the studio, I have the fabulous Miss Terry, a.k.a. Unity Era. Hey. How are you? I'm good, highly blessed and favored. Today's message is being grateful. Are you grateful today? I'm always grateful. I'm grateful Every that day. Jesus is my Lord. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful that I have a beautiful wife. Mm -hmm. Of course. I'm grateful that I have beautiful children. Right. I'm grateful that I'm in the studio with you. I'm grateful that you have a 16-year-old son that's yes, an I amazing. Do. What are you grateful about? <laughs> I'm grateful for everything you mentioned except for the, the husband part. I'm not married. Father, but... we, lift, we lift up my Samoan. <laughs> Please we lift up my pray Samoan for me. Yes, Jesus. Right now, Jesus. In Jesus' name, that's coming. But I'm grateful for life. I'm grateful for the people I'm, I, I'm around. God has blessed me with an amazing son. Okay. Raymond is his name. And okay. he has a Hawaiian name. It's, it's Kiona. Okay. So um, I'm grateful for my mom that I'm able to spend another Christmas, you know, wow. holiday with her. My sister, my brother, their families. And grateful for you. Yeah, yeah. And Amen. Amazing Thank you. show that we have going Amen. on here. You know, today we're going to be talking about being grateful. And I'm so grateful for the opportunity that God brought me up from the dead, from the nothing, from the streets, from the mess, and he gave me a life. Right. And he gave me an eternal life in Christ Jesus. He gave me a ministry called SOG Crew. Amen. And you're right now watching SOG Crew yes. Youth Movement. But one of the things that I want to talk about when it comes to being grateful is that I never forgot those that helped me. Mm -hmm. I never forgot and I never stopped appreciating the ones that gave me uh, an opportunity to serve, to clean toilets, mm -hmm. an opportunity to evangelize to my city of Anaheim. And I never forgot those that gave me my first microphone uh -huh. to rap. Of course. Real talk. So right here, I want to show you live on the SOG Crew Youth Movement TV show, episode seven, I want to show you one of my best friends, Mr. King Cyrus from Anaheim, California. Ooh. And I appreciate because, you know, now that he has a radio show, I had to go back. Yeah. You know, a lot of times when people start being successful, they don't go back. Right, right. And we go back. We go back. So here you go. SOG Crew Youth Movement live from the King Cyrus radio show. Check it out. Well, first of all, I want to thank Jesus for my salvation. And I want to thank uh, you, King Cyrus, and your beautiful wife, Keisha Williams, for yeah. the opportunity to be able to be here with you. It's a tremendous honor. I tell the whole planet this, that you are the first African-American man that ever, I said, did I say ever, can I say ever? You said ever, you said ever, ever, ever. I'm saying you are the first brother that ever went to the prisons, deep into the dungeons like Paul and Barnabas. And we reached the Mexicans inside of the prisons. Do you remember that? <laughs> the spirit man was, was very proud, but I was like, man, I, I remember you was telling me, he was like, man, hey, bro, just, just go in there and just do your thing. Like, I'm like, all right, man. I was like, they were prison. It, it was all open to yeah. so it wasn't like the normal type of prison. And we were hip-hop guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like trip out on that, you know, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. you know what? But, you know, honestly, from the boldness and just uh, uh, you being bold, you know, uh, had me had me grow really quick yeah. in the spirit of things of God. You well, know you know what? what? It really showed me a lot at that time. We were in the prisons of Mexico. Uh, we had our own hip hop thing going on, and people don't even know this, but you were working graveyard okay. every single night, right. mm -hmm. and we were doing ministry. We were reaching the hoods. We were re doing these concerts from like seven to ten. And then you're like, bye, and you fly off yeah. to do your jobs yeah. for years, <laughs> for yeah. years. And, and that's the thing that a lot of people, they just want to be a hip-hop artist, and that's it. Not realizing that in order for you to step into that calling, you have to have balance. You still got to pay them bills. Right. You know, you still got to pay them tithes. Well. And you still got to make sure that you're not uh, out of order and you're doing the things of God. And right. because you guys gave me that opportunity, my marriage was strengthened. God restored my marriage. Yeah. God Amen. gave me and, and, and fixed me and strengthened my identity. And all of a sudden, SOG crew just blew up on the scene. Yeah. And it just, 
Mm -hmm. it, it didn't just become like this little group. This became something, it became a movement that they've been, to this day, they call me from China, from Brazil. They call me from all over the world. And they're, they're like, what you guys have done in the last 20 years has inspired us and we want to do the same thing. And I'm like, we came from Anaheim. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know, we came, you yeah. you with us. Oh, yeah. yeah. We you had your mom. Uh -huh. I remember yeah. Oh. Yeah. One time I was like, Jermaine, I said, King Cyrus, I need you to go with me to the, to the Coca Cola Nation. And you said, I can't go, but my mama will go. Yeah. That was my dear friend, King Cyrus. You were at the studio. I was at the studio. We I'm, very, I'm very thankful for uh, Keisha and King Cyrus. Mm -hmm. So they have a radio right. show that they do every... Every Mondays. Every Mondays in the city of Santa Fe Springs. Right. And uh, it was just a blessing to be able to be out there. This next clip we want to show you is coming from Denver, Colorado, at an event that we did last year, right before Christmas, called the Luminarios... Uh, a Father's Heart event featuring some of the biggest in Latin rock, uh, legendary uh, conga player, Mr. Tony from the group Malo. Uh, he's now in a Christian band called Bueno. He's in another band called uh, the Latin Kings All-Stars, and they travel all over the world. But we were able to go back to Denver, Colorado, and we did a coat drive, and all the Christians came together. We gave our coats because it was snowing, it was a blizzard, wow. and people were walking around really? with t-shirts. Oh, wow. I'm not trying to be walking around in t-shirts <laughs> in no During snow. In a blizzard. In no blizzard, right. in the name of Jesus. That's you crazy. Know. But, you know, the scripture that we want to talk about today is 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, and it says, in everything give thanks. In everything yeah. give thanks. I give thanks for you. I give thanks Amen. for you out there in the Middle East, in Africa, I give thanks for all my homies out there in the Philippines and Asia and Compton and Brooklyn, Bronx, Queens, Manhattan, Harlem and St. Louis. I give thanks for, to all my SOG crew family. I give thanks for my dad, Amen. all my uncles, Summerton, Arizona. I mean, all my American Samoan homies. Amen. You yes. know I love my Samoans. Yes, you do. You know, <laughs> it says, in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Amen. You know, God says give thanks. You know, it's to be grateful, but at the same time, to feel grateful, yeah. to feel thankful. And a lot of times, this is what God was telling me today. A lot of times, we go into new areas. Mm -hmm. God starts opening up dimensions and doors and opportunities and windows, and he starts opening up all these things. But as we walk in, a lot of times we walk in with a bitter heart. Right. We walk in, we don't trust anybody. Yeah. And we don't, as we're feeling around, as we're feeling around in this next uh, level, in this next glory, in this next door, in this next opportunity, in this next position, in this next chapter of our lives, we're feeling around with bitterness. Yeah. Or how we did it last time. Mm -hmm. And God is saying, no, when you feel, he says, be thankful in all things. Meaning, all when things. you're feeling around, be thankful. Around. I might not know how to preach. I might not know how to rap. I might not know how to dance. I might not know how to talk to people. I don't understand women, my wife sometimes. I don't understand the kids. I don't under, but in everything, when I'm feeling around, when I'm going into new doors, new uh, uh, opportunities of work or business or ministry or travel or international or native, whatever it might be, as I'm feeling around in new genres of right, styles, right. I have to be thankful with all my heart yeah. and stop focusing that I don't understand. So what do you think about that? I think the same way you think. Um, we have to be, the word says it, be grateful and thankful in everything. So no matter what we're thrown with, a lot of the times, you know, that causes our bitterness. But can you relate? I can relate because we're ever, human. Have you ever we're elevated? We're human. I mean, have you ever gone into a new level by the grace of God and, and inside of your heart, you're hurting. You just came out of a, a crazy season and yeah. you're beat up. Yeah. I mean, there's a saying that says new levels, different devils, you know, or new devils. You know, so whatever level that God is elevating you to, there's always a challenge. You're going to be challenged and faced with certain things. But we have to realize that it's a test that God is putting in our path to, to test us. Where is your faith in God? How strong is your faith in God? Are you going to be able to get over this mountain? Because he's been able to get us through the other mountains we went through. I've experienced where 
as God was pushing us like, like, like labor pain, mm -hmm. as we were birthing SOG crew, or, or as we were birthing new albums, or as we were birthing this new anointing, or as we were birthing new areas of ge geographic areas, it was so much pressure and right. so much fire. It was so much craziness that a lot of people left because they didn't know how to be grateful yeah. in all things. Yeah. So here you have, all the way from Denver, Colorado, working with my good friend, partner, father in the Lord, Mr. Angel Barrientos in the RMPA. Check it out. I'm so blessed. Much love to all our people from Denver, Colorado. Woo! in uh, Denver, Colorado, and I uh, play congas for the Lord, and I'm excited for what the Lord's going to do next in the music ministry for our world and His kingdom. So in Jesus' name, you be blessed now. God bless you. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Battle Axe from SOG Crew. We are live at Delgado's Gym in the city of Denver, Colorado, having an amazing time of concert and outreach here with Brother Angel and the whole family, a lot of amazing artists, a lot of amazing groups that have come out from Phoenix, Arizona, from San Francisco, California, from here, from Denver, Colorado. I had a great time with uh, Little Battle Axe and we just did our thing, SOG crew. It's a blizzard outside here in Denver, but you know what? We're having an amazing time here at Delgado's gym. God bless. How you guys doing? God bless you. This is Robert Jr., Little Battle Axe from Anaheim, California. I'm out here in Denver, Colorado. We're hanging out at this concert, and uh, we're just kicking it, having a good time, spending time with family, man. And um, I'm actually getting ready to go to South Dakota. I'll be in Montana, and um, then it's Christmas. from the world famous SOG crew, live from Denver, Colorado at Delgado's Boxing Gym. We just experienced an amazing night of outreach where we distributed coats, fed families, and even had something for the children. Angel Barrientos here for the Rocky Mountain Promoters Association. Uh, just had an event here uh, as part of the weekend of events called Luminarias the Father's Heart. Uh, it's a, uh, community outreach here in Denver that went through the weekend. We still have one more day. Uh, very, very happy, very, very pleased uh, to see the people that turned out, uh, the music, uh, the food, uh, the children. Uh, last night, uh, another event where uh, the SOG crew were able to minister to uh, a group of youth. And looking forward to tomorrow where various groups and music ministry and uh, long established groups will be uh, spread out throughout Denver, different churches, in an effort to do collaborative networking on the basis of being part of the outreach community of the south, southwest region of the United States. It is something new. It's emerging. It's, it's getting to uh, more, be more defined. It's getting to be more defined, uh, and it's, uh, it's working. It's uh, going places, and it's going to make a big impact on helping at-risk people, youth, uh, getting funding for after-school programs, uh, intervention, prevention, uh, and we're just happy to be a part of it. Uh, and so that's a, good, uh, that's a good thing. Wow. So far, from watching those video clips, I'm just thankful for the opportunity to be able to go back and help out my friends, King Cyrus, mm -hmm. you know, to go back to the underground, to go back to Long Beach, to yeah. go back to Anaheim, North Orange County, Santa Ana, Garden Grove, to go back where our roots are from. Right. 
American Samoa, mm -hmm. Hawaii, Hawaii, you know, and I'm also thankful that I'm able to leave my area and go to Denver mm -hmm. and to help out a people that are not my own, but yeah. through Jesus, yeah. that's all my family, Very, our family. you know, and this next footage that we're going to show the world is live from Skid Row. People don't even think Skid Row is a real place. Is it a real place? It's real. It's as real as it gets. You have to be there. Why is Skid Row real? What's real about it? The homelessness that's now taken over that area and the people that are there and the children that are there. And people may see pictures on TV and watch certain things and you know, may not think, oh, it's not like that out there. It is. It's, it's probably worse. It's, it's worse than you see it on TV, to be there in person. Can I say something? And I'm going to say something that most ministers might not agree with. Mm -hmm. When you're out there at the midnight hour at 1 a.m. in the morning, when everybody's on drugs out there, when everybody's packing weapons, yeah. when everybody's gangbanging, when everybody's having mental issues mm -hmm. oh and, and, a, and a mental outbreak, crazy there's an opportunity that they're going to want to fight the christians right you know in because in the past they fought the, the pastor mm -hmm. they fought the pastor <clears throat> i mean was that in your thoughts while you're out there as you were serving of course yeah i was thinking all kinds of things like we needed you know the women were all serving so my thought was we need the men to protect us you know we we need protection there's more homelessness there's thousands of people out on that street that you didn't get to see but there were more of them than us. And like you mentioned, they're going through mental illnesses. Something's wrong that got them to the place that they're at. So I was thinking all kinds of things. Like what if, because I used to go, we went there when I was little, when I was a teenager. Yeah. So we almost got stabbed with needles and yeah. stuff like that. So I, the memories of all of that came back to me. And I'm thinking, okay, what am I doing at this time of the night? You no, know, at that but, hour. But, but look it, look it. Just so that you know how we are with SOG Crew, SOG Crew Youth Movement, if we are a team and we're out there, we're one. Yeah. And if anybody even looks at you crazy, I'm going to approach them and, and pray for them. But then there's times that they're going to get violent. Yeah. And I'm going to protect we, our family. Yeah, we experienced that that night. When we were there, the, I told one of the, one of the ladies, because she came back and started drinking all the juices and grabbed like so many cups. And I told her, you can only take one cup. And then she grabbed the cup and then threw it at us. Wow. It, she threw it at us, but it, you know, all the, the girls that were standing with me, the two girls um, that were there, we all backed up. So it didn't hit us. Yeah. But those things happen. Yeah. You know, we're not going to know who's going to, you know, throw a big fit and fight. And then we saw fights there that night, oh, too. Oh, man. So it gets crazy. Well, you know, even though we're talking about dangerous ministry, I'm very grateful because God has chosen us to go there. Mm -hmm. And he didn't give us something that we can't handle. Right. And he knew exactly who was supposed to be there. And we went there and it was dangerous. And but you know what? We led people to the Lord. Yeah. You guys fed and you served them food and soup and, and everything. And, and and you know what? They even stole the blankets. Yeah. There are people stealing blankets. They stole there. a box of blankets. Yeah. So even though it was radical, even though it was crazy to minister to one of the worst communities when it comes to homeless issues in the whole world mm -hmm. I was very grateful and I appreciated God for the opportunity and in all things in whether all things. it got crazy I was I, even though like you know the old school one what what don't be looking at my Samoan homie like that <laughs> don't be don't be looking at my Samoan my Samoan partner like that you know but I was still grateful so here you have Miss Terry first time Skid Row in the midnight hour midnight. when everybody else was sleeping. Check it out. We are out here in Skid Row. We just got done feeding the homeless, and it was a whole lot of people here. And um, a lot of help we had gotten, too, as well, in serving the people. It's crazy out here, especially at this time of the night. We came around 11.50 p.m., and it's like probably 1, you know, 1 a.m., and a lot of people are afraid to come around this time. I've never been here around this time. It's my first time coming out here at this time. I'm here during the day, but I have never experienced Skid Row at this time of the night. And my heart goes out to these people and also to the people that do come out here and serve these people. The smell out here is just, it's crazy. Uh, I, I'm sure 
my son he's really sensitive to stuff like this so he wouldn't want to be here and smell all of this i mean we're all like that you know we don't like a certain smell and, and it's really horrible out here but this is a life they live on a daily you can take a look around and see all of the things that are happening here and it's not a life that we want for our family and for our children so i'm really like soft-hearted when it comes to things like this and just seeing how they live and especially when it's cold out and they just, they're laying on the floor, on the ground, and they're eating food off the ground. They're, I mean, I could never imagine living like this. And um, I'm just grateful for Robert from SOG Crew for allowing me to be here tonight and just inviting me out, um, cause I would be as asleep right now at this time, warm in my bed and with my son at home, but there's a need, there's a greater need that I saw that was needed here tonight. And I just didn't come just to come, just to be here. I came to serve just like Jesus did when he came. He came to serve the people. He came to these people. He didn't come to save, you know, those that were already saved. He came to save those that were lost. And these are the ones that are here. There are thousands of people on these streets. I haven't seen any kids, but I'm sure there's lots of kids running in and out of these tents and sleeping on the, on the ground. And we wouldn't want that for our kids. So I encourage everyone out there to get involved. Amazing. I, as crazy as it was, as crazy as that experience is, and a lot of people say, oh, I'll go into the crazy places. Honestly, we've been to crazy places. We've been to Nickerson Gardens and the projects of, of Watts, yeah. you know, in different places. And, and when you look around, you don't see any, any advocates. You don't see the Christians. You don't, you know, you, you don't see anybody. No. You know, and we're sitting there uh, in, the, in the middle of a gang war zone. Mm -hmm. I remember... Uh, during the summer, mm. they said they were going to kill like 50 people in 50 days. Right. And there we are in the projects. And a hundred. There was like a hundred nights. They, they were talking about that too. So watching that Skid Row footage, how are you appreciative of the experience? Um, I had a moment when I was watching that. I, I watched it a few times and just sitting here um, getting like teary eyed thinking about the, that moment um, and just being appreciative of life and where God has us. The, you know, we take a lot of things for granted. Um, the roof over our heads, you know, um, our kids being at home with us, um, you know, being able to go home, our jobs, um, the cars we drive, uh, the food that we eat, you know, we take advantage of a lot of those things and we take it for granted, actually, um, the blessings that God has poured in our hearts to be able to be a blessing to other people. So to see the things that they're going through and to see what we saw that night and to know that they do this every day, that that's their life and to know that we're able to go home to our warm beds and to our kids being safe at home. Um, I thank God and I'm grateful for where he has me and has all of us, you know, and the platform that we have to be able to reach out to the people out there, out Amen. in the world and Amen. out in Skid Row. And that's, yeah. they need us. They need us and whatever we're able to give, well, I'm we can. I appreciate you. I really do. And I appreciate you coming here to the SOG Crew Youth Movement TV show. I really do, with all my heart, appreciate you. I appreciate what God has done in our lives. Um, it hasn't been easy. You know, um, I appreciate that God rescued me and delivered me and saved me. Only Jesus can do that. He saved me, yeah. found me. And I'll be transparent. He found me inside of the Orange County Jail, main jail with a bunch of killers and, and I was with people that were going to prison for life and, I, and God met me there. And I appreciate that he restored my marriage. I appreciate that he gave me the SOG crew ministry and movement. I appreciate that he's given me an opportunity to travel and work with every city in this country, getting ready to go to American Samoa, Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, Guam, on March 22nd through April 3rd, I'll be, mm -hmm. we will be with Unity Era, we will be doing a tour of the Hawaiian Islands. I, I appreciate that. You know, one day, and I say this with all seriousness, I appreciate that God is grooming me and setting me up 
to be a, the president of the United States of America. Mm -hmm. And I believe that with my entire Amen. being and my core, Amen. because that's the path that God has for me. So I already appreciate and I'm thankful. I, don't, I didn't understand it in the beginning. I didn't understand what to learn. I kept saying, oh, oh, I, I would tell my party, oh, should I study foreign, foreign affairs? Should I study you know, agriculture? Should I study <laughs> all these different issues? No, study pro-life. Huh? Yeah. No. Should I study, right. you know, being, being an ambassador? Should I be a statesman? Should I, should I be an orator? Should I, should I, uh, should I study how to dress properly? I, no, pro-life. Mm -hmm. That's all they kept That's saying. Pro-life, 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 pro-life. And so what pro-life did for me was it opened my, my thoughts of how important life is. Mm -hmm. And so I appreciated that they gave me all the books about pro-life. They gave me all the studies of pro-life and and so, I, like I say, with all seriousness, one day I will be president of the United States of America. Check this out. We're getting ready to end. I just want to let everybody know out there, if you are feeling like nobody cares, if you feel that you're just hopeless right now, I pray in the name of Jesus that God would bless your heart, that God would bless your being, Amen. that God would touch you right now that you would be able to see, that you would be able to appreciate the food that you eat. Right. You might just have beans. We were so poor, all we had was beans. Yeah. We lived in Santa Ana. We lived off of flour and walnut in the hood. When, my, when, when, when trial in my family happened, my mom took us to Santa Ana. We didn't have nothing but a couch and beans. And, 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 and we had to appreciate that. Yeah. And so if you just have beans, if you just have Be rice, grateful. if you have your health, if you have your mama, if you just have your family, just appreciate that you're alive. And yeah. trust me, God will take you to a whole different type of thinking. Last, last thought. Um, be grateful for everything. Be grateful for. I know I said I was grateful for my family, but I want you to say I'm grateful for my team that, that surrounds me every time. Rare Breed, Keisha, and Pastor Tremaine, and also you. Ooh, thank you thank to you. everybody. I'm surrounded by great people. And be grateful for those that are around you and, and be a blessing to them as you have been blessed by God. All right, man. SOG Crew Youth Movement. This is episode seven. Be grateful. We'll be back next Friday, 4.30 Pacific Standard yes. Time. Cross TV.